So this is a practice really on just tuning in and quieting that piece of your mind that is really judgmental or afraid of making a mistake. There really are no mistakes today and we are just going to play and practice and get comfortable with this medium. Supplies today are cold pressed watercolor paper, Windsor & Newton professional grade watercolor paints, a size 14 round brush, clean water, and a paper towel. Start by setting up your space and really making it a special place for you. So put on some good tunes and maybe even light a candle or some incense and really just start to relax and let go of your day. Here are some brush strokes and botanical shapes we're going to be using. I am going to use a really light stroke to heavy to make a lot of my botanical shapes. For instance, I can make flower petals. Um, so say that center of the flower is here and it rises up from there. I'll take a really thin line and move into a thick petal. Maybe that petal is um, very thick and I use two of those strokes to create one petal. Another petal is right next to it. And a third and a fourth. Cool, so that is um, a thin to thick line. Now let's think about if these are the front petals that I see first, there's some back petals peeking up behind here. So I'll add some in, use a little less water, pick up some of that water, not so dark. I'll add them in back here. So I'm using the side of my round brush to create these petal shapes. And I'm gonna use my white space to um, to have some definition between the front and the back. Maybe it starts to come down and kind of shows how this flower comes together. So in that, I am using uh, thin to thick. And then sometimes I also, as you saw over here, use the belly of my brush, so the side of my brush press it down onto the page and kind of drag the brush over the page to create a really thick petal. And sometimes I use a very thin stroke just to bring that back to the center point of my flower. Oftentimes the center of your flower is going to have a little bit of yellow. So that's great to visually give the viewer an idea of what you consider the center of the flower. I'm gonna pick up some green and start right at the bottom of my flower and just create this stem. It's turning into a little bit too red, so I'll go back in and you know, maybe there's a leaf here. So again, for my leaf, I do a thin to thick and then I end up usually I end up going thin again. So let me show you. Thin to thick to thin. And I create that thick line just by pressing down and then lifting up. We wanna see a variance of tone here. So not everything should be this wash. There should also be some darker um, points in your composition and even some white of the paper should come through. Okay, now that we have our basics down, we're going to start our final piece. So go ahead and wet your paper with clean water. Lay down a lot of water here, a very thick layer. In terms of composition, I would recommend using three of these larger pink flowers that we already kind of reviewed in our warm up. Place them on the paper, dancing around the center point. Allow the florals just to come out onto the page, and once they're there, go ahead and use those light brush strokes to create stems and then leaves. You'll notice that I'm working very lightly here. 
which allows me to change and shift the composition as I add in more layers of pigment. So one of the best things with working on wet paper is that your edges are very, very soft, allowing the artist to define each object as they continue to paint and the paper begins to dry. As you continue to paint, notice your body and how you're holding it. Notice your jaw, if you're clenching your teeth, and really start to soften the way that you're holding your body at your desk. Notice here that I have this well of water kind of pooling in the center of my paper. So I'm going in with a paper towel and just blotting it up so that it doesn't take forever to dry. On to my next layer. This is where we start to get a little more definition. We start to focus a little bit more on each object and really set it within the composition. As you see, I'm going in with the same color, just a little bit richer saturation here, more pigment on my paintbrush than water. Working intuitively is more a process of stepping back and not forcing painting, not forcing your brush strokes. Just really trusting that what you're putting down on the paper is the right thing. I'm starting here to put in that variation of tone and defining the object, the flower in this case, through the white space that is left. I love this technique because the colors start to blend together on the page and create these new unexpected accidents that really end up becoming really beautiful parts of the composition. And that is the beauty of intuitive florals. You're really just observing the medium and seeing how it comes to life on your page. You'll notice here that I started to put in smaller flowers. I'm using a yellow just to pop some color around my page. I'm putting these in three spots so that the eye really moves from top to bottom in a very organic way. This next layer again adds a little more definition. I like these blue flowers so I'm going to give them a little bit more weight. So again this is more pigment than water on my brush. And as you continue to paint don't feel like you need to define every petal or every part of the flower. You are giving the viewer's eye just some suggestions of these botanical shapes and allowing them to finish the rest. So you'll see here I'm going in with an even deeper, richer red and I'm not going to show every single petal here. So here I'm just going to put some finishing touches really fill in my paper where I see maybe some holes, give even more definition where I can. So take a moment now to just check in with your thoughts and see if they are holding you back or creating self-doubt. And if they are, that's okay. But just as we are clarifying and defining the objects that are on our page, we are also clarifying and reinforcing those positive thoughts that support us and instill confidence in our process. As we move towards the end of our painting, you'll see how this definition of tone and edge really helps move your eye around the painting. You'll also see the sprigs of yellow and blue kind of dance around the pink flowers, as do the green leaves. 
So there's a lot of variation here. Watercolor is great for that. And this process allows you to practice using that to your advantage. After a painting that you've finished, you'll come back to it and it will be relatively dry and you'll notice how different it looks. So know that the process even continues once you put your paintbrush down. That painting is still transforming, it's still becoming. So thanks so much for painting with me. My name is Jamie Reynolds. Please subscribe if you'd like to hear more and don't hesitate to reach out with any questions. Much love.